Good Friday morning to everyone. This is Daniel Crawley with the Foothills Weather Network. And before I give you the latest on the potential of winter weather, I want to give you a quick look at today's forecast as you head out the door across the foothills in western Piedmont. Today should be a very nice end to your work week. We should have mostly sunny skies, temperatures in the mid-40s across the foothills, mid to upper 40s as you head your way down into the western Piedmont. And for our folks in the higher elevations of Burke, Caldwell, McDowell, could be a few lower 40s hanging tough for your Friday. Again, most of the sunny skies. If there's any increase in clouds, it'll be late in the day, and those will be more of the uh, mid and high level clouds. So that should provide a pretty good sunset uh, later today across the region. All in all, not a bad way to end your work week, especially considering what we got going on down the road. And of course, uh, that's the big story that we've been talking about the last few days, the potential for winter weather across the region. And this is our latest high impact weather outlook for Saturday night through Monday morning. Now, when we use that time frame, that's not really going to be continuous precip during that time, but it is a general time frame, <clears throat> excuse me, that we could see uh, some winter weather across the coverage area. Of course, forecasting any winter weather event is never a slam dunk in this part of the country, but we do feel like um, we have a pretty solid handle right now on what's going on. What we do know at this time, a southern stream low pressure will affect our area, and then at the same time, high pressure across the northern tier of the country will provide a cold air damming scenario, <clears throat> excuse me, east of the mountains. Uh, that will begin later tonight, and it will really accelerate itself as we head into Saturday uh, before the moisture from the southern stream moves in. Uh, there are going to be various types of precipitation types with this storm system. There is going to be some freezing rain, sleep, could even be some snow at the onset. And for some areas, it could be a cold rain mainly. So we still have all the precip types on the table that could occur. We feel like the areas that may see the most uh, wintry precip in our coverage area will be along the north of Interstate 40. So if you were in Marion, Morganton, Lenore, uh, Hickory, uh, Granite Falls, Gamewell, uh, Taylorsville, those areas across foothills along the north of 40, you got the best chance of winter weather. As you head south, the good news is we feel like that the cold air won't be as established uh, in Forest City or maybe Shelby, Kings Mountain, or over toward Lincolnton or Lowesville. Uh, that cold air may erode a lot quicker in those areas and maybe after seeing some light wintry precip at the beginning of this event, it should turn over to cold rain for most areas. Now, the second part of the storm is the upper low that will produce potentially some flurries and a few snow showers across the foothills on the back side of the storm system. That would be late Sunday. Day. No accumulations are expected this time outside of the mountains. Of course, again, with any weather event, there's still some variables out there and things that we're not 100% confident on yet. One of those is how quick the warm nose of air aloft moves into the region. I could tell you right now, with the history of forecasting this part of the country, that is always the toughest part of a winter weather event, is knowing exactly when that warm air is going to move in. And usually the cold air will wind out, win out a few hours later than the models expect or even you would expect as a forecaster. So that's going to be important not only for how much ice you see, uh, for in the foothills with this event or how much snow or whatever falls in that area, but does some areas further south see some frozen precip? That will all be determined on exactly how quick that warm nose can move in. Uh, the exact storm, storm track, still some variables there as well. And then with the upper level system for late Sunday and Monday, does it transition any precip back to snow? Again, that's for up to question. If it does happen, best chance would be, again, in the foothills and closer to the higher elevations. Again, a quick look at the forecast map and what we expect from the storm. It's really two pieces. The first piece is the southern stream system that's moving from Texas almost due east across the southern part of the U.S. At the same time, high pressure across the northern tier of the country is funneling in the cold air. And then as you can see on this map, the area of low pressure that's moving from the Ohio Valley into the Appalachians, that is the track of the upper low that will come in behind that, and that will be coming in 
uh, like we said, on Sunday and into Monday. And that's going to usher in a uh, reinforcing shot of cold air as we head into early next week. Uh, we've had a lot of people ask, when is this weather going to break out? And I think this graphic we have right here uh, kind of tells a lot about what we think is going to be impacted and when it's going to be impacted. This is our impacts and timeline. Uh, the three categories here, travel, uh, trees, and especially thinking in uh, relation to icing and then potential power outages. And that's something that, folks, you need to keep in mind, especially across the foothills. If we get some of the uh, ice accretion that we're expecting, power outages are definitely a possibility. Trees could fall and would impact travel. The good thing is travel and any impact as far as power outages or ice building up on trees should be very few problems during the day on Saturday. But as you see going into Saturday night, the overnight hours and into early Sunday, the things really ramp up. And if you look down at the bottom of this graphic here, our scale goes from low in the green color to extreme in the purple color. Right now, the good news, we don't see anything at the extreme level. But travel issues, especially if ice on bridges and overpasses could become an issue. That would be late Saturday night into the early morning hours of Sunday. So if you're going to church services on Sunday, uh, kind of be aware of what's going on and see what's going on in your area. Uh, the issue with uh, ice building up on trees and power outage uh, and on power lines actually would occur first compared to roadways. So that might be an accelerated process to where it occurs a little bit earlier as soon as the precip starts. The thing to remember is that when this precip starts Saturday evening, tomorrow evening, and into the overnight hours, number one, it's not going to be constant and heavy to begin with. It's going to be scattered nature. But also, temperatures tomorrow are going to struggle to get much above freezing. And with cold air in place, it's not going to take long for those temperatures to drop to freezing. So what little bit of precip falls, and there's even a chance that it could fall as drizzle or mist at times. And honestly, in a uh, freezing rain type scenario, that's really the worst case scenario because uh, it allows the temps to drop quick enough and it, things can freeze up fairly quick and kind of keep you off guard. So this is a kind of a timeline, as you can see right here. Travel issues will be late Saturday night through the morning hours of Sunday. Issues of ice starting to build on trees could occur late evening Saturday through the morning hours, but should improve around lunchtime. Uh, power outages, if we start getting them, that's kind of a delayed process. That could continue uh, through a good part of the day on Sunday, so hopefully we can avoid that. But uh, the potential is there, folks, and uh, as we always say, be prepared uh, during a winter weather event for any potential of uh, loss of power. Now, uh, this is an updated look at our forecast of what we're expecting. We've done a few changes to this uh, since yesterday's update, but for the most part, uh, it's pretty close to what it was. Across the heart of the area, if you're along Interstate 40 from Marion to Morganton to Hickory to Taylorsville, you are in that blue shading. And what we've done for our latest forecast is we have lowered the snow and sleet potential because honestly, I, we believe at this point that that could only occur at the onset and it would be brief and the warm air aloft should kick in to change over to freezing rain. So we're now lowering our snow and sleet totals to one inch or less. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that, of course, that we can always change that again, but one inch or less of snow and sleet from this event. The bad problem about that, it's more in the way of freezing rain and we feel pretty confident that freezing rain amounts could eat Get range anywhere from about two tenths to about four tenths. Areas that probably would receive the higher amounts would be in the higher elevations along Blue Ridge Parkway, or if you're in the South Mountain chain there in uh, Lower Burke County, uh, Southeast McDowell County, Northeast Rutherford County, those areas where there's a little bit of elevation, and those are naturally some areas where uh, it stays colder anyway. So those are areas that could see the highest of the totals of ice from this event. So for the heart of the foothills, expect an inch or less of snow and ice accretion could be anywhere from just a couple tenths to just under a half inch. And folks, I really hope 
Um, I really hope that the high end of that total doesn't verify us because if it does, uh, it could be quite an impact, <clears throat> especially in relation to power outages and to trees falling down. So hopefully that won't happen. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, in the shading and green in our southeast part of the area, like I mentioned earlier, a brief mix to begin with, but mainly rain and should be very little accumulation as far as snow or sleep and hopefully no accretion of ice either. For folks up in the mountains, this is going to be kind of a two-part event. We'll have the uh, first part of this event uh, for Saturday night and Sunday. Some of that could start as snow, transition over to sleet, and can transition even over to some ice. And for folks, um, I hate to say it, even, you know, in Avery County, Mitchell County, and Watauga County, as you head up to the mountains, you could see a good, tenth to quarter inch of ice as well but the other part to this storm system is as the upper level features move through on saturday night and sunday this will turn into a northwest flow event for our folks in the mountains and some of that could spill into jonas ridge or globe so that's why we have three to six inches of snow to sleep and again if you look at the top on this graphic this is through monday morning the majority of what's going to happen to lower elevations will be saturday night and sunday but as we said, in the mountains, with the second part of the storm, it could linger uh, even into the early hours of Monday. So that's what we're looking at right now. Be prepared, folks. And we can't tell you this enough. We can't stress enough. Be prepared uh, for winter weather. This doesn't look like a huge event area-wide. But if you're not paying attention, especially across the foothills, you can really get caught off guard because it takes very little ice to cause major problems across the area. So with all that going on, we'll look at the uh, winter storm index right quick and no changes from what we had yesterday. We're still got it on level two prepping the roads and anticipation for an event that could have some impact across the area. So that's a quick update of what's going on with the potential of winter weather keep it with us here at foothills weather network these graphics we'll have on the daily weather vane here in a few minutes and you'll be able to uh, see that as well over on the daily weather vane and of course this video will be available on our main page on our video archive page all day and uh, we may do another update later on chris and scotty may do another update uh, once we get more information in on this uh, winter weather event so that's it right now this is dan probably with foothills weather network we hope you have a good Friday and stay safe outside this weekend.